This is a presentation on low molecular weight heparin and thrombosis by Team 16. The objective of this presentation is to discuss the condition of thrombosis and the drug class of low molecular weight heparins with regards to the possible disease states, the drug targets, indication, side effects, and mechanism of action. Thrombosis is the presence of a blood clot in blood vessels. The vessel can be in any vein or artery. The clot prevents blood circulation throughout these veins. This can cause pain, inflammation, or warmth. Heparin has anticoagulant properties. Low molecular weight heparin is a class of drugs used as anticoagulants, which are also known as blood thinners. They are used to stop blood clots from forming and growing. This is a picture of blood clot formation. The top portion of the picture shows a newly formed wound, with red blood cells and platelets aggregating at the wound site. The bottom portion of the picture shows a later stage of the clot. At this point, the clot is formed, showing red blood cells and platelets aggregating together to plug the wound. This is a picture of deep vein thrombosis, which is caused when a thrombus dislodges and becomes an embolus, which is a traveling blood clot. Here we see a thrombosis in the thigh of the left leg, leading to edema and massive pooling of blood. Clotting is the body's natural response to damaged blood vessels. It is a heavily regulated process that involves cellular components, which are called platelets, and protein components, which are called coagulation factors. These work together in the intrinsic, extrinsic, and common pathways. The cellular component of blood clotting involves platelets. Damage to blood vessel walls expose collagen to platelets. Circulating platelets then bind collagen with surface collagen-specific glycoprotein 1A, 2A receptors. This adhesion is strengthened further by large multimeric circulating proteins called von Willebrand factor, or VWF. VWF forms crosslinks between platelet glycoprotein 1B and collagen fibrils. This adhesion activates platelets. Activated platelets then release the contents of stored granules into the blood plasma. The granules' contents include ADP, platelet activating factor, VWF, platelet factor 4, and thromboxane A2, which in turn activates additional platelets. The granules' contents activate a GQ-linked protein receptor cascade, resulting in increased calcium concentration in the platelet cytosol. The calcium activates protein kinase C, which in turn activates phospholipase A2, PLA2. PLA2 then modifies the integrin membrane glycoprotein 2B, 3A receptor, increasing its affinity to bind fibrinogen. The fibrinogen crosslinks with glycoprotein 2B, 3A to aid in aggregation of platelets. The protein component of blood clotting involves coagulation factors. Upon tissue damage, the extrinsic pathway on the right and the intrinsic pathway on the left are activated. The extrinsic pathway involves factor 7 activation to factor 10 activation, 10 binds to antithrombin 3, leading to thrombin formation, and leading to the blood clot, which involves fibrin crosslinking by factor 13. The intrinsic pathway involves factor 12 activation to factor 11 activation, to factor 9 activation, which activates factor 10, then binding to antithrombin 3, activating thrombin, leading to blood clot, involving, again, fibrin crosslinking by factor 13. Based on the previous slide, it is clear to see that merely one dysfunction in the cascade may present problems. Improper fibrinolysis, genetic impairment, and medications like Vios can cause improper blood clotting. The picture presented earlier on the left is explained more thoroughly in the picture on the right. The picture on the right shows a deep vein thrombosis above the knee. The deep vein thrombosis prevents blood flow to the upper portion of the leg, leading to swelling and inflammation below the blockage site. Thrombosis can result in many serious health complications. A clot is obstructed blood flow, so less blood flow gets to certain organ systems and edema can result due to blood pooling and backflow. Dislodged clots, or emboli, can result in even more serious complications. 
A clot can travel as seen in deep vein thrombosis to the lower leg, to the lungs in pulmonary embolisms, to the brain in strokes, can cause infarctions or tissue necrosis due to lack of oxygen, and even death. The possible drug targets for thrombosis include, but are not limited to, the following key players in the coagulation process. Platelets, coagulation factors, calcium, collagen, ADP, vitamin K, protein kinase C, phospholipase A2. Current low molecular weight heparin drugs target antithrombin-3, accelerating its activity and resulting in inhibition of downstream thrombin in factor 10A. Other drugs that prevent blood clotting include warfarin, which is a vitamin K inhibitor, reducing the activity of clotting factors, and unfractionated heparin, which has higher thrombin inhibition and must be monitored very, very closely. Low molecular weight heparin is a class of medications used as an anticoagulant in diseases such as thrombosis, as well as for prophylaxis in situations that lead to a high risk of thrombosis. It's the anticoagulant of choice for deep vein thrombosis prophylaxis in major orthopedic surgery and in major trauma patients. Common low molecular weight heparin drugs include artiparin or normaflow, daltaparin, fragmin, Inoxaparin, Lovinox, and Tinzaparin, Inohep. The adverse effects of low molecular weight heparin involve bleeding at any site. This can involve minor bleeding, such as bleeding from the gums or hematorrhea, or frank hemorrhage. Several cases of bleeding or hematoma within the spinal column have been reported with concurrent use of a low molecular weight heparin and epidural spinal anesthesia, or spinal puncture, which can lead to long term or permanent paralysis. Thrombocytopenia is reported in less than 2% of patients receiving low molecular weight heparin. Few cases of osteoporosis and hyperlipidemia can occur with patients taking long-term heparin. So how does low molecular weight heparin work? The mechanism of action involves low molecular weight heparin binding to activate antithrombin-3 and facilitate its binding to inactivate factor 10A and 2A. The inhibition is more selective for factor 10A, resulting in prevention of fibrin blood clot formation. The size of low molecular weight heparin determines which factor it can inhibit more selectively. In the picture, factor 10A is inhibited by low molecular weight heparin. It is fully inactivated because it can cover both factor 10A and the antithrombin complex. However, Factor 2 remains activated because low molecular weight heparin is not long enough to cover both factor 2A and the antithrombin 3 complex. Low molecular weight heparin activates and facilitates the action of antithrombin 3. Antithrombin works slowly to inhibit thrombin, preventing blood clots. Low molecular weight heparin binds to antithrombin to activate it, converting it from a slow progressive thrombin inhibitor to a very rapid inhibitor of thrombin in factor 10A. Low molecular weight heparin activates antithrombin-3, resulting in a more selective inhibition of factor 10A than factor 2A. Low molecular weight heparin contains pentasaccharide chains. Any pentasaccharide chain can inhibit factor 10A, which is greater than 5 saccharides. However, only pentasaccharide chains greater than or equal to 18 saccharide units can inactivate thrombin. Therefore, a long chain is required to form a ternary complex between heparin, antithrombin-3, and thrombin. Low molecular weight heparin consists of less than 50% of the adequate pentasaccharide chains, greatly inhibiting factor 10A but limiting factor 2A inhibition. This principle is illustrated in the following picture. The top portion of the picture shows unfractionated heparin, which is long enough to bind both antithrombin 3 and 2A as well as antithrombin 3 and 10A, resulting in both factors inactivation. However, low molecular weight heparin is not long enough to cover the entire antithrombin-3 and factor 2A complex, leaving factor 2A activated. It does, however, bind to antithrombin-3 to result in factor 10A inhibition. Inhibiting factor 10A and 2A prevents fibrin blood clots. By inactivating thrombin, heparin prevents fibrin blood clot formation. Thrombosis is a blood clot. By preventing clots, we can greatly reduce the number of health-related diseases and deaths. 
Heparin is administered through an IV and is used for short-term treatment only. Side effects include bleeding or hematoma, osteoporosis, and hyperlipidemia, as well as thrombocytopenia. Drug options include artiparin, daltaparin, anoxaparin, and tenzaparin. These work by selectively inhibiting and inactivating factor 10A and 2A. Coagulation can be altered by many endogenous and exogenous factors. The following slide is a list of our references. Thank you.